Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Fright Friday right here on Night Owl Video. Today we are talking about fire in the sky based on the true story. Um, the French is O-V-N-I, L'Ultime Rencontre. I don't know what that means. That's when you live in Canada, you get the English and the French. Um, but yeah, we're talking about this movie, Fire in the Sky. We'll be talking about cast, production, critical reception from the movie film critics, uh, my thoughts on the film, where you can watch it, and all that jazz. So I hope you stick around to the end. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I appreciate that you decided to join me on this uh, movie and physical media journey. And I hope you will enjoy some reviews. Uh, please go back and check out my playlists. I have, like, I'm closing in on 100 um, horror movie reviews and about 100 cult movie reviews. And I think I've got probably like 40 or 50 thrifting hauls. So if you like that kind of th thing, I do have them curated in playlists so you can go back and check them out. But today we're talking about Fire in the Sky. This is a science fiction mystery film from 1993. It was directed by a person named Robert Lieberman who directed a lot of TV and movies that I am not familiar with. Uh, so that's just that. This stars D.B. Sweeney, who was in Spawn, uh, Taken Part 2, and lots of TV shows. Robert Patrick, who of course was the, um, the melty robot in Terminator 2. Copland, which is actually a great movie if you ever get a chance to see that. And the uh, Johnny Cash biopic, Walk the Line. This film also shows Craig Schaefer, who was in uh, Sheffer, who was in uh, Some Kind of Wonderful, as well as Nightbreed. Henry Thomas, of course, all grown up now. He was in uh, E.T., Cloak and Dagger, Gangs of New York. Peter Berg, who was in Very Bad Things, Battleship. Um, and he was also, um, he, or sorry, he directed Very Bad Things in Battleship. He was also an actor in Copland. And um, he's also created and acted in lots of TV shows. This also shows James Garner, uh, and the Great Escape, uh, who was also in The Great Escape, Maverick, and Space Cowboys, which is a movie I will never watch. For, I, I just, why would I? I don't know. Maybe it's a good movie. I don't know. I just, every time I see that, I'm just like, Space Cowboys? No. Uh, with James Garner? No. The synopsis for Fire in the Sky is, in 1975, a group of five men are driving home after working in a forest when they see a mysterious light. Intrigued, Travis Walton, played by D.B. Sweeney, leaves the truck only to be sucked up by a flying saucer. The other four men report the strange event, but they are skeptically interrogated by Lieutenant Frank Walt Waters, played by James Garner, who suspects that murder is behind Walton's disappearance. When Walton reappears five days later, his story of alien abduction is met with disbelief. And yeah, this is allegedly based on a true story, so... Um, the production notes on this film, <clears throat> from what I could garner from uh, the internet, it's based on the Travis Walton book, The Walton Experience, which describes an extraterrestrial abduction. In the book, Walton tells how he was abducted by aliens and taken aboard a unidentified flying object. The film's alien abduction scenes bear almost no resemblance to Walton's actual claims. Scriptwriter Tracy Torme reported that ex executives found Walton's account boring and insisted on the changes. So this is a bit uh, sensationalized from the true story. Fire in the Sky grossed $19.9 million domestically on a $15 million budget. The special effects in the film were coordinated by uh, George Lucas's former company, Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, there were actually a total of seven men in the logging crew in, real, in the real story. Uh, the writers whittled them down to six for the movie, not wishing to confuse the audience with too many characters. All seven men have passed lie detector tests, some of them twice, uh, in real life. Uh, director Robert Lieberman said author Anne Rice, the vampire uh, lady, uh, told him that the movie was the scariest movie she had seen at the time. Craig Sheffer was nearly fired from the movie, allegedly. Director Robert Lieberman said he would often show up late uh, to work on the movie, and apparently the other actors and producers were uh, quite annoyed by Craig Sheffer's behavior. Craig Sheffer, he was sort of the bad kid in um, Some Kind of Wonderful, and I always disliked him because of that character, because he played sort of like the the... Well, if you grew up in the 80s, I guess they were like jocks or like rich kid jocks 
And he played that role so well in that movie that I really just didn't want to look at him anymore. <laughs> so good job, I guess. But um, he was really good in this movie, but apparently he was uh, just not being very good on set. Surprisingly, this film only holds a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. John Ferguson of the Radio Times wrote, quote, Lieberman wisely concentrates on the emotional impact of the event on a close-knit circle of friends and family, although the eventual revelation of the abduction is genuinely scary, unquote. Now, I have an interesting history with this movie because I remember renting this with my partner at the time when it first came out on VHS, and we, we rented it, and we watched it, and I hated it. I thought it was... I. My partner really liked the movie at the time, and I was just like, that, that was such a dumb movie. Like, I... I just did not like that movie when I saw it. Now, 30-some years later, or whatever it is, um... I was floored rewatching this movie now. Maybe, I guess, my tastes have changed over the years, and I'm sure that's happened to some of you before. You watch a movie, and then you don't like it, and then you watch it years later, and you, you love it. Um, this was the case for me. I, I was like, oh my god, this movie is so good, and so scary, and so well acted. And uh, I have to be honest, like at, at first I just was not a fan, but I am definitely uh, sold on this movie now. I guess it's just one of those movies that my opinions have changed as I've aged, but yeah. I thought the group of guys in the movie worked really well together. They were really, the, the chemistry between the cast was really convincing. Um, you could really see the anguish when they were trying, like, because these are like logging, like tough guys, right? So they, um, you know, alien abduction and they're like in the backwoods and they're, they're you know, they're probably kind of like, we can't tell anyone this. They're not going to believe us. And James Garner plays the, the police officer that is definitely not believing them. And so you feel this like anguish from these guys because they're like, clearly this happened. We saw it happen. Um, but we know nobody's going to believe us. So it's like, what do we do? Do we keep quiet? But there's this missing guy. So they have to try to explain that away. And they just, you know, they have to come clean. But you could just, I don't know. It was just like the the... The, I don't know, like the anguish was like palpable. They're like, what are we going to do in this situation? And trying to like be tough guys and like not admit to each other that what they really saw happened. Um, the actual abduction scenes at the end of the, at, near the end of the movie, and I'm not going to give away too much, but it was honestly terrifying. Like the, on upon this watch, like I was really like leaning forward in my seat, like, oh my God, this is so intense and so scary. And not many movies do that to me, but um, I will say like about a month ago, I watched that movie Crawl and that was one where I was just like on the edge of my seat, literally like. Um. So these movies don't come along very often and it's just funny that my reaction to it initially was like, I don't like this movie, but I was totally like 180. I was like, oh my God, this was so good. I actually, I, I actually wrote in my notes that like after I watched it, I was so creeped out that I had to put on like a comedy show after or like a movie. I remember, I can't remember what it was like Austin Powers or something. Like, I had to put something on to like calm myself down because I was like really weirded out by this movie. The other one, just a few years before this, was the Christopher Walken movie Communion, based on the novel by Whitley Stryber, and I always thought that movie was superior to this upon watching it. But now I'm thinking maybe these are sort of like, for me, are like on the same level. Um, I haven't, that's a movie I would really like to rewatch, Communion. Uh, it's also about alien abduction. Because um, <clears throat> the only other one that really wigged me out was uh, The Fourth Kind. Um, with a lady from uh, Resident Evil there. <clears throat> that movie was also very scary. But for a different reason, because I actually thought it was based on a true story. A spoiler, it's not. Um, but, yeah. But this one, like, of course, it's, like I said, it's been sensationalized for a Hollywood film, so clearly some of the stuff in it has been, the special effects are added, and the alien, you can see the one of the aliens on the back here, they're very spooky looking, almost human, but almost like, like the gray man type thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, I was really wigged out after watching this movie. Um, I'm older too, so maybe I'm just getting wimpier, but uh, I, wow. I give this movie like a big thumbs up from me. Um, 
And yeah, I'm just curious, like if anybody out there that's watching this, if you have had that similar experience with a movie where you watched it when you were younger, didn't like it, and then you watched it later in life and you're totally floored. Uh, that was my experience with this movie. This edition is the Paramount DVD uh, put out in the year 2004. There's the back. And it's one of those annoying ones with the little, remember these guys, the little tabs. When I was younger, I used to tear those off just so I didn't have to open it all the time. But uh, the disc art is just a picture of the the gentleman being abducted, which that scene was actually pretty, pretty scary too. But this is rated 14 in Canada. It's a region one DVD. Runtime is 109 minutes. Um, it's presented in widescreen. Again, the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen are normal. Uh, special features on this. Let's see. There's none. Uh, it's just presented in widescreen with subtitles. Um, American Movie Classics said, quote, the last 10 minutes are so terrifying, you'll be gripping the edge of your seat, unquote. And I couldn't agree more. Um, I had that very same experience, but yeah, you can currently watch this. Uh, you can rent it on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, and Google Play. So that's my thoughts on Fire in the Sky. Did you like this movie? Did you not like this movie? Uh, tell me what your favorite alien abduction movie is, or maybe this is it. Uh, consider giving me the thumbs up if you like this review. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and you you know you feel like it. And you can follow me over on Instagram at Night Owl Video, where I again try to post. I'm not super good at it, but I try, do try to update it from time to time. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Fire in the Sky based on a true story. Let me know your feelings on this movie below in the comments. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I, yeah, do not do not watch this movie alone if you're like a scaredy cat because it's really, really scary. Um, you could probably get through most of the movie, but like the last 20 minutes of this movie, yikes. Very, very scary. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I will see you at the video store or the thrift store, or just out and about somewhere. But in, or, or, and hopefully I will not see you um, laying on a gurney uh, aboard a spaceship being uh, probed by aliens. But until next time, take good care of yourselves. You know, keep an eye on the sky. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.